Have you ever wanted a Power BI report that creates its own data dictionary automatically? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a data dictionary in your Power BI report that lets you show details about your columns, measures, tables, and relationships. And the best part is that the data dictionary updates automatically as you develop your semantic model. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. So let's have a look at this report that I prepared for you today, which is the subset of the Northwind dataset, which is a fictional company that sells grocery goods internationally. So the model itself is fairly simple. We just have a bunch of tables that represent our different products and their different categories. We use the calendar table here to represent and visualize our sales by, by month here and we calculate the total sales using this measure here called sales, which is multiplying unit price and quantity. If we look at the model view here, we already have a bunch of relationships set up between these tables. So Power BI knows how all of these tables are related and how they should react when they are put in the same visual. So, so far this model is pretty basic. And let's say we want to create a data dictionary for this model. We're going to start by exploring this new functions info.view function. So we're going to start by going to the modeling ribbon here and we're going to click new table. We're going to start by naming this data dictionary. And then we're going to simply just type info.view and let's start by looking at the columns first, which is the first one. If I hit enter here, and I go to look at what the output is of this in our table view. There's a bunch of useful metadata information here that you can use to analyze your semantic model. But for our purposes, we are only interested in getting the information that we need for our data dictionary. So to keep it simple, we're just going to look at some of the basic things that we want to have in our data dictionary. So we want to have the name, the table, the description of the column, as well as the expression if it is a calculated column. So let's start by going back to our calculated table here and let's do a select column. This will allow us to choose which columns we want to bring in and customize the name of these columns. So we're going to bring in the table info.view.columns. We're going to start by creating a type, which is a new column, which is going to distinguish this column from the other info.view views. So we're going to leave that to column for now. And then we're going to create one called name. And then we're going to re reference the name from this, uh, this table. Next column description, location, which is just the table and then expression. And here we go. So as you can see, it just gives us just the columns that we need. However, we might want to filter this a little bit more because there are a few things that we don't want to include. One thing that we want to remove is the data dictionary. We want to filter this table to make sure we exclude the data dictionary. So we're going to wrap this table here with a filter function. We're going to say if the table is not data dictionary. And we're also going to add another one here to exclude anything that is hidden. So there is this is hidden here, which once you've added these filters ensures that you only bring in the columns that exist in your model at least not the ones in data dictionary and those that are not hidden. And here you go. So if you wanted to create a data dictionary of just your columns in your semantic model, this should be enough. However, when we looked at the info.view functions, we noticed that there are three other functions that we can use to pull measures, relationships, and tables. So we're going to look at bringing all of those components into one table and create your data dictionary. So, the next thing we're going to bring in is the measures. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this into a variable first of all. And then we're going to create another variable here, 
which is for the measures, just to keep it easier to read. Uh, Info.viewMeasures here. So if I just reference this variable here, measures, just to show you the same thing as before, it just shows you a list of all the measures that you use in your uh, in your semantic model. Again, it has a bunch of other uh, metadata information that you can use to analyze all your measures. But in our case, we're only really interested in getting the same information that we have in the columns here. So the name, description, location, and expression so that we can combine them into one table and then we can start kind of building our data dictionary in our dashboards. So from the variable, actually to make it simple, we're just gonna copy the variable here, uh, the columns variable. The info that view, we're gonna change that into a measures. Uh, we're gonna leave all of these filters, it's not hidden and it's not data dictionary. We'll change the type into a measure and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Change the name, keep the description, table, and expression. So now if we hit that enter, you'll see that it's created as the table with just the fields that we need to create our data dictionary. Lastly, since we are just returning the measures here and not the columns, we'll combine these two using the union function. So we're gonna do columns and measures like this. As you can see, the union function combines both of these two variables uh, tables together and they don't produce any errors because we use the select columns to make sure they have the same number of columns in the same name. That's perfect. So now let's bring this into our dashboard to create our data dictionary page. Let's go back to our dashboard uh, page view here. Let's create a new page. Then in our data dictionary, we're gonna bring in all of these elements in a table, something like this. We're gonna remove the type and we're gonna put the type in a slicer visual instead. And there you go. So as you can see in this table, it gives you the list of all the columns and measures that you have in your semantic model. And you have the ability to choose which one you want to see based on this slicer. If you want to just see the columns list or the measures list, it will give you those um, different um, results. A few things to note if you're using this method to create your data dictionary is that you're bringing in your columns and measures as they are. So it's very important to give them intuitive names as it will show as it is in your data dictionary without an option for you to change it apart from renaming it, of course. It's also important to update the descriptions of each of these elements in the properties bit. So you can find this under the model view. If you select any of these tables, columns or measures, you will see the description section, which you can uh, update manually. And so we'll just give that extra bit of insight to that column or measure. So continuing with our demo, let's add the last two other info view functions. Uh, let's look at the tables. So we're gonna create another variable here, tables, and we look at the info view tables. And then for this one, we're just gonna return the tables just so that we can see how that looks like. So as you can see, there are a bunch of, as well, metadata information, slightly different from what we had from columns and measures because the tables are the tables, they don't have a location, but nevertheless, they need to be in the same kind of format as the tables that we created previously. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the union function to combine them with the columns and measure tables that we've created. So. What we're gonna do is we're going to copy one of these. So we're gonna copy the, the measures one, for example. We're gonna go to info.view, I'm gonna change this into tables. Under the table here, table doesn't exist anymore. So we're gonna just filter out and make sure that the name is not data dictionary. So we exclude data dictionary in this list. And if it is a data dictionary, you might also want to exclude your uh, measures 
table, which is a table that we simply use for organization's purposes. So it's the calculations table in our case. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that uh, extra bit of logic here. I'm just going to exclude calculations here. We'll change the type into a table. Again, there's no more location. So instead of table here, we're just going to give it a blank. Here, we're just going to combine these three tables that we have so far. So here we go. So now, if you look at the very bottom, it's added our different tables here. It adds the expressions if they exist. If they don't, they are, they are blank. The locations will stay blank because they don't exist anywhere. So the last thing that we need to add now are the relationships, which is a slightly different structure as well. Uh, but we're going to follow the same steps that we have been doing so far. So I'm going to do relationships here. I'm just going to comment this out so we can reference it later. So if we look at that preview here, so these are the relationships that we have created. Um, we have the relationship here between which column in which tables, what direction it is, what cardinality it is. It's actually got a lot of information here in this one column. You can check and use any other metadata information here. But to be honest, this already has everything that we need. So we're just going to look at bringing in this part of, um, of the table. So I'm going to copy this, paste it into the relationships, change this, this into relationships like, like this. And this time we don't actually want to put any filters. Although you might have some instances where you have inactive relationships, it's actually your choice if you want to show them or hide them. But in my experience, if there is an inactive relationship, I usually use it in other elements of my measure calculation. So I would just leave this as no filters as it is like this. Under type, we'll change this into relationship. Under name, we're going to bring in relationship like this. Description, you can't really put descriptions in your relationship. So we'll leave it to blank. Location is blank and expression is, we'll bring in the relationship same as the name. And then lastly, we'll update our union here to include our relationship. There we go. So here we go. So in our main table, now we have the columns, measures, tables, and relationships. And as we've added these into the same data dictionary calculated table, if we now look back into our dashboard view here, you'll notice that you have more types that you can choose to see in this table. So you can see the columns, measures, relationships, and tables. The best part of this solution is that you can publish this into the Power BI service, which basically works the same way as any other functions in Power BI. It automatically updates. So as you make changes to your semantic model, so let's say we change the range of this calendar from 1996 to 1995, you'll see that it updates the expressions automatically in our calculated table. And best of all is that the data dictionary DAX script that we've created here is basically reusable. So if you copy and paste this into your own data model, apart from adjusting the filters, you should be able to use it as it is because the metadata is the same regardless of what kind of dashboard you're building. So it's independent to kind of what tables or columns or measures you've created. So it's going to be one of the staples that I think I will have in my templates moving forward. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so that to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, 
and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.